something about an old school song. Right. It's not very intricate in all the melodies and the rhythms and things, but there's just the heart in which it's sung. Yeah. There's something about those old school songs. Yeah. When you say something like, Just. We give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and justice. We will sing, sing praise to the name of the Lord. Lord. You have
have promised to judge the world in righteousness and govern the people with justice. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. As we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Everyone, therefore, we enter your presence this morning to honor you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because all just our mean. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat our first scripture this morning will be taken from the book of Psalm. Psalm number 22, verses 25 through 30. That's Psalm number 22. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. And the end of the world, all the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow down, shall bow before him. Even he who cannot keep himself alive, a, post a posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generations. Hallelujah. promise to judge the world in righteousness and govern the people with justice. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. As we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Everyone, therefore, we enter your presence this morning to honor you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because all just our mean. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. trouble because he's the one he's the way the truth and the life let us go to the throne room of grace father we just come this morning with bowed heads and humbled hearts always with thanksgiving on our lips when we think about your grace and your mercy in our lives we're humble we're thankful we just bless your name you are good god all the time you are good Oh, Father, we ask a special blessing this morning on each one under the sound of my voice. Lord, you know what we need before we even ask. But you told us to always pray and not faint. Keep on asking because you're going to in due season. We're going to reap our reward. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, Lord. We just bless your name this morning. Realize, Father, that you touched our hearts and minds and called us out of the darkness to the marvelous light of Christ. Father, your word say, none seek after you. No, not one, but you saw fit to touch. 
trust us, to give us the measure of faith to believe that he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. In him, we live, we move, we have our being. Oh, Father, we just bless your name. When it, every time we think about you, we just lift our voices in praise to your holy name. We pray for our sick this morning, our shut-in, our bereaved, those, especially those that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, Father. He paid it all, but they won't take the free gift that's been offered. Have mercy, Lord. We thank you for our pastor, this mighty man of God. You have really blessed New Covenant with, and we're so thankful for him. We pray for his mind, his body, his strength, his family, and we pray for the anointing that you have given him. He got a command of that scripture, Lord, and we're so thankful. Let us always lift him up in prayer because we know he's praying for us. Then, Father, forgive us of our sins. Let the blood of Christ continually do his mighty work in our lives. Lead God and direct us always is our prayer. In the master's name of our great God and Savior, Yahshua, our King. Hallelujah. Once again, New Covenant Shalom, Bat Shabbat Shalom. Let us all stand now for the reading of our cultural heritage. We are the New Covenant Baptist Church. We are out the mark to say to God. We are fellowship. We are family. We are the old ship of Zion. We are out the Then, Father, forgive us of our sins. Let the blood of Christ continually do his mighty work in our lives. Lead God and direct us always is our prayer. We are the New Covenant Baptist Church. We are out the mark to say to God. We are fellowship. We are family. We are the old ship of Zion. We are on the move. Nothing can stop us now. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You moja. We need unity. We will unite and become one. We will not let division enter our family. You Gemma. Means collective work and responsibility. We will work together. Covenant rise. Let God's people rise. I love you. I respect you. I will not seek your physical or spiritual downfall, nor inflict any bodily harm upon you. I will trust you. I will aid you in time of distress, care, and time of need. I will defend you. Let us unite and become one. I respect you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Let new covenant rise. Let
26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I? And someone guides me. And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in which the scripture, the place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter and as a lamb before his shearers silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and, and beginning at this scripture, preached Yahshua to him. Now as they went down from the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahshua HaMashiach is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities until he came to Caesarea. Hallelujah. The second New Testament passage comes from the book of 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 21. Again, 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 4 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our, our sins. Yes. Beloved, if, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Amen. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whosoever confesses that Yahshua is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. For we have known and believed in love that God has for us. God is love, and he who, ab he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who has fear has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he sees, how can he love God whom he has, he has not seen? 
And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give the Lord a hand clap of praise because he loved us and we love him. Hallelujah. At this point, it is our peace fellowship. But before we do that, are there any first time visitors visiting with us? Well, I can look out in the congregation and see we're all here together today and we are all family this morning and so let us all stand for our peace fellowship greet one another in the family as we are family in brotherly and sisterly love in the name of our Savior Hallelujah. peace fellowship
brothers and sisters. I just want to thank everyone who came out last Sunday to our special women's ministry meeting and to remind you that next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, May 5th at 2 p.m., we're gonna be meeting here at New Covenant in the Red Room. And I'm gonna send out the agenda this week. If, you don't, if I don't have your email address, I'll have additional copies of the agenda at the meeting. Um, as we said at our special meeting, we're gonna be forming committees to work on some new ministry activities. But also, we're gonna be partnering with the mission ministry to participate in some community outreach. So if you have been wanting to be engaged in ministry work, and praying about serving, but you have ob obligations that won't allow you to, to commit to a long-term committee, this will be your opportunity to see how you can use your own special talents. The Passover Reflections. The Passover and Unleavened Bread from Leviticus 23, 4 through 8. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the 14th day of the first month, Abib or Nisan, at twilight is Yahuwah's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahuwah. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day, you shall have holy convocation, the Sabbath. You shall do no customary work on it. The Feast of First Fruits from Leviticus 23, 9 through 14. And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring up a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before Yahuwah to be accepted on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer on that day, when you wave the sheaf, a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to Yahuwah for a sweet aroma, and its drink offering shall be a wine, one-fourth of a hen. You shall eat neither bread nor parched grain, nor fresh grain, until the same day that you have brought an offering to your Eloha. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Passover, known as Pesach, commemorated Israel's hurried departure from Israel and associated hardships they experience. Many believe and teach that Yahusha fulfilled the Passover. The truth is that Passover is the fulfillment of the prophecy Eloha gave to Abraham. Genesis 15, 14 through 16. Passover is an everlasting ordinance. In the Levitical system of sacrifice, 
Passover was about redemption from Egyptian bondage. It is remembered that Father Yod redeemed Israel with great judgments from Egyptian bondage. Exodus 6, 6 through 9, 15, 13, Acts 7, 18, and 19. In the Hebrew language, a lamb refers to a sheep or a goat and is pronounced say. It is a masculine noun that means one of a flock, lamb, sheep, or goat, Strong's H7716. In ancient Israel, a goat was used as a sacrifice to atone for the people's sins. However, a lamb can't atone for sin. Leviticus 16. 15 to 22. The lamb's blood on the doorpost did not protect everyone in the house. The blood only protected the firstborn. The Egyptians who did not have the blood on their doorpost lost only the firstborn. That is why the firstborn needs to be redeemed. Therefore, the Passover was not about sin forgiveness, but the firstborn's redemption. In the case of the first Passover, Israel was Yahuwah's firstborn. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8 says, For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The removal of leaven denotes in Scripture false teaching, not sin. Leaven is removed from your home before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts. The instructions have to do with eating leavened bread. For the followers of Christ, the bread came to symbolize Christ's body, offered as a sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews 10, 10 through 14. By accepting Christ's sacrifice in place of our death upon repentance, repentance and faith, Father Yah forgives, put away sin by Yahushua's sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 9, 26, and sanctifies us, setting us apart for the holy purpose of obedience to him. Not only does Christ's blood permanently covers our sin, but it also makes removing our guilt possible. Christ's shed blood does what no animal blood could ever do. It purges our conscience from dead works to serve the living Eloha, Hebrews 9, 13, 14, and renders all animal sacrifices obsolete. The writer of Hebrews 9.22 explains that according to the law, all things are cleansed with blood and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Beneath the veil of Christ's blood, Father Yah passed over our sins and enabled us to escape his eternal judgment. Drinking the wine at meals and on sacred occasions, including the Passover, had become a tradition among the Israelites. However, the Savior Yahusha attached special meaning to the wine on the Passover. The wine for followers of Yahuwah. 
became mm -mm, the wine for followers of Yahusha drank the wine as a symbol of Christ's blood shed at Calvary. On the night, he ate the Lord's Supper with his disciples before his crucifixion. He instructed them in the same manner. He also took the cup, the wine, offering after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 1 Corinthians 11, 25, and 26. Pesach, known as Passover, was renamed Easter by the Roman church. The translators translated Pesach to Easter in Acts 12, 4. And the Roman church incorporated a pagan religious holiday celebrated and worship worldwide. The word Easter is a mistranslation of Pesach and was removed in the New King James translation by substituting, not translating, the word Easter for Passover, the translators redirected the thought from a holy day commanded by Father Yah to a church holy day commanded by the Roman Catholic Church. Passover is celebrated yearly and can be celebrated on any day of the week. However, Easter is always on a Sunday, commenting the day to a particular Sunday coinciding with the vernal equinox, removed all association from Passover and gave the Christian church something they had never been observed in the history of the Bible. Not by the Savior Yahusha, the apostles, or the saints of the first century. Remember, prophecies have been fulfilled at feasts, but the feasts do not fulfill prophecies. Passover, Pesach, is an everlasting ordinance for all the redeemed people of Eloha, Israelites and Gentiles alike. These are your Passover reflections. If you're going to live a life that is pleasing to the Most High, that will guarantee you a place in His divine kingdom. God word, Yahuwah word is truth. Yeah. And the Savior Yahusha says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from ignorance, free from deception free from the falsehoods of the evil one who desire to sift your life like wheat. Make his word a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Let us go to the throne of grace.
Most gracious and loving Father, Yah, we thank you today that you are prayer hearing God. There are, are no secrets, there are no illness, there are no anything in this world that is beyond your power and no ability. You know our thoughts from afar off. You know the secrets of our hearts. They are not hidden from you. Help us to confess our sins and our faults, our iniquity. Then give us a heart of repentance that we'll come and surrender ourselves to your divine holy will, purpose, and word. Forgive now our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every unkind word, unrighteous deed. Forgive us, Father Yah. I pray now for every name that's been called. You are omnipotent. You are omniscient. You are omnipresent. You are everywhere. So, Father, you wherever our loved ones are, wherever they are, whatever need, whatever concern, in the name of Yahusha, grant them healing power. Give those who've been through surgery a recovery that they can get back and resume their normal activities. Bless the bereaved families among us. Comfort and strengthen, Father Yah. Heal and deliver. Comfort them, that's only you can do. So now we bring the concerns of the congregation. We bring their pain, their hurt. We bring their loved one before your divine holy throne. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Incline your ear to us. Grant us thou peace. In Yahushua's name we pray. Hallelujah. gospel reading will come from John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Again, John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, 
He is cast out as the branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit, so that you will be my disciples. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
most gracious and loving Father Yah, we come with thanksgiving and praise in our lips, thanking you for another opportunity to express our gratitude and thanksgiving to you through worship. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are the creator. You are the sustainer of the universe. You alone created us. Your image and likeness gave humanity a dominion over your creation. Thank you that Adam's transgression did not solidify our eternal damnation. But that you, Father Yah, in your wisdom already knew before you created man what it was going to take to redeem him, barrel sheet. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Thank you, Father Yah, for your benevolence, for your long suffering, for your love, and for your mercy. Thanking you for bringing us to the divine truth, freeing our minds from the nonsense of Eurocentric Christianity and its corruption and paganism. We follow Yahushua the Christ, our means of salvation, and the only means by which we have access to your divine eternal presence. Now, Father, you are blessed the preaching of the gospel. Faith come by hearing. Hearing come by and through your divine holy word. Your word is spirit. Your word is life. Speak now life to us. That hearing we believe and believe we will bring our lives in compliance to your word, will, and purpose. Speak, Father Yah. Speak, Yahusa, speak that your people will hear. Bless those who are still stiff necked, who refuse to accept the truth of your holy word, but rather perpetuating a lie and nonsense of paganism. Touch their hearts, they will come out of Babylon come out of the falsehood of corruption and the nonsense of humanity and surrender their hearts to the Lordship of Christ, Yahusha, our Redeemer. Bless me now and give me strength physically and spiritually. Pour your spirit now upon me that I may stand and preach your holy word. Uncompromised. Unafraid? Speak now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, of my strength and my Redeemer. It is in the precious name of Yahushua the Amashia. Hallelujah. I wear this Afro-Israelite yarmulkes in commemoration and acknowledgement that there's a God above me. He is my head. So we cover our heads in homage and respect to him. We uncover them when we pray. In the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. 
and every branch that bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already clean clean because of the word which i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you may be my disciples. Hallelujah living in a biblical reality, being mindful of your abiding relationship with Christ, living in a biblical reality, being mindful of your abiding relationship in, uh, with Christ, hallelujah. Brother Ronnie, is that you up there? Hallelujah. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Praise the most high. He come back and get back in his place. I like that. Ain't missed a beat. Hallelujah. The men sound good, didn't they not? Yes, they did. I marvel at Dr. Bartwell. Most men, most people, when they arrive at certain heights of academia, they forget their roots. They lose their mind and many times acquiesce to nonsense. But this brother who take care of the physical anatomy also sings songs that saturate our spiritual being. When he was a young boy, about 12, he was always tall. He didn't want to sing with the angelic choir. That was his. And so he used to go down the way over here to side. I, I, I saw you, man. But I let him go on and sing with the, uh, the, the young adult choir, the inspirational choir. He was so big all his life. But I admire him. I love him to death, he and his wife. And how they are rearing their children, grounding them in biblical principles, grounding them with the attitude of serving. Them little rascals are probably up there in the sound room, one operating at Passover was operating the, uh, the daughter was operating the uh, PowerPoint. Little Roy was up there on the mixer. So these little guys learning service, 
And then Layla was here reading the four questions of Passover. I, I am my parents. And I like this too. They don't just send them to church. They bring them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Reverend didn't call my name. Well, I ain't calling your name today. <laughs> so get over it. But I like all of y'all nurture and discipline your children. Right now, our schools is chaos. It's a zoo because we have so many undisciplined children. And where there is no discipline, there is no learning. And as a result, we see the mayhem, the violence, and the nonsense that engulf our community. We are Israelites, stiff-necked people who just won't do right. Father, y'all have to bring us to the very pits of hell for us to repent and come back and be obedient. That is why he had to send us all over the face of the earth as slaves. Because yeah. our ancestors wouldn't behave themselves. He gave you a warning in Deuteronomy 28. I gave you 14 verses to teach you about blessings. But you chose to do opposite. So therefore, 15 through 68 is your lot. And I want you to know Israel is not in her land yet. Israel is still scattered. When Yahushua come, he's going to bring the exile. He's going to bring uh, uh, the diaspora back to their own land. And the prophet going to do what? Bring the two sticks. Judah and Israel, they shall be one stick. Right now, they scattered. Now you get me down and talk about something else, I'm going to jump off and start preaching that. That ain't the text. Let me get to this text. I blame Dana for that. She got me going over this. So let me get back to the text. All right. Our focus today is a significant biblical text. A significant biblical text. It's the final of Yahusha's seven claims of deity, which are expressed as I am statements. Once again, our focus today is on a significant biblical text, the final of Yahushua's seven claims of deity, which are expressed as the I am statements. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Hallelujah. Now, do you see the significance of this statement? Let me point it out to you. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. This statement holds profound meaning. If the Savior, Yahushua, is the true vine, it means then that there are other vines. Did you get it? Did you get it? If he's a true vine, it implies 
recognize the existence of other vines. However, unlike other vines, Yahushua as the vine is directly connected to the Creator and the Heavenly Father. Yes, yes, yes. See, this connection to Father Yah is not just important, it is crucial. Why, preacher? Because it serves as the source and the security for the vine's life. Father Yah is the root of the vine, providing the what? The life-giving power necessary for the branches, productive, fruitful, and spiritual growth. Yes. Now, Father, you he, see, he's not only uh, uh, the source, the support, the sustainer for the life-giving power, he is also the what? The vine dresser. The gardener. Pruning, which is essential for the branches, the believers, spiritual wellness and fruitful growth. Yes, there are other vines, but they are not connected to the creator. There are ways that seem right unto a man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. So if he the true vine, there are some other vines out there deceiving, destroying, not providing you what you need in order to be what? Have spiritual wellness because they are not connected to the life-giving powers of God. They just some vines. Y'all got it? All right. All right. I can move on then. Got it? If he's a true vine, that means what? There are other vines. That means what? Other deceptions. There's other nonsense. Other corrupt religious practices. Those, those other vines, because they are not connected. That's why they keep on practicing Christmas and Easter and all the other pagan traditions and holidays, because they are not connected to the life-giving power of the vine that is connected to the creator, the heavenly father. The biblical metaphor used of the uh, vine dresser, it emphasizes Father Yah's role in removing dead branches representing the lifeless, the unfruitful, the apostate believer who never believed in the first place. See, uh, 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 this removal of dead wood, what does it do for the vine? It enabled the vine, the fruit-bearing branches, to be what? More productive. It allowed the what? The fruit bearing branches, the productive believer to be sharply distinguished from other branches. Yes, 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 yes. The removal of the dead wood is vital. It enabled the fruit bearing branches, the productive believer to be sharply distinguished. The Savior word, verse 2, he said, every branch that bears fruit, listen to this now, every branch that bears fruit, he, Father, y'all, prunes that it may do what? 
Hallelujah. Because dead limbs do what? They sap life from the productive branches. Those who have flowers. What do you do? You, you cut off them dead flowers, right? Because they be sucking nutrients from the one that is productive and the one that is what? Fruitful. Hallelujah. Every branch that bears fruit, Father Yah does what? Prune that it may bear more fruit. What does this suggest then? It suggests that if you are not growing in faith, if you are not growing in your knowledge of Father Yah's holy word, it may be that you got some dead wood in your life. Yeah. If you are not growing in faith, if you are not growing in your knowledge of Father Yah's word, it may be that you got some dead wood, man, some dead wood in your life. Yes, 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 yes. See, that's why it's important as believers to take inventory of your life, to identify areas that need significant growth and change. It's so important. I don't care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you've been pastoring all your life. You need to take time and do spiritual inventory of your life to see and identify areas that need significant change and growth. Remember, Father Yah is who? The vine dresser. He does what? He alone possesses the power. I like this now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this. And he alone possesses the power and wisdom to surgically remove the dead wood of unproductive growth from you. See, if you try to do it, you ain't going to be like the surgeon. You're just going to just start willing willy and just start whacking off. And you're allowed to destroy some good branches in the process. Hallelujah. You trying to correct Sister Barham with your wisdom, you allowed to just chop her up and hurt her and cause her to be stunned. But Father, y'all said, no, let me do the pruning because I'm going to use wisdom. I'm going to surgically yeah. identify what need to be taken from her life so she can do what? Become productive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Got it? Yeah. He surgically. Yeah. Yes. He knows what need to be extracted from your life. Yes, yes, yes. He's, so he, he moved that dead wood of unproductive growth from your life. Now, this process is challenging, sometimes painful, but it's the pathway to spiritual maturity and personal development and this should do what inspire and motivate all of us to strive to do better now you may label this as the savior spiritual guidance for fruitful living hallelujah therefore be selective or who you let into your private world and the information you take in for intellectual and spiritual wellness. Be selective. Yes, Who you let into your private world. And be selective of the information you take in for your intellectual and spiritual wellness. Yes, even for the spiritual growth of Christ assembly, the church, it become necessary that Father Yah remove unproductive, divisive branches from the membership. These branches refer to individuals or elements within the assembly 
that instead of contributing to its growth and unity, calls division and hinder spiritual progress. If not removed, they become a malignant cancer that destroy everything in sight. That is why he has to come in to the assembly and surgically remove the spirit of divisiveness. Remove the element that hinders spiritual growth. In your ministry, when you have divisive people, if they are not dealt with, can become a malignant disease that will destroy your ministry. Why don't you try to separate them? You go to the power source and say, Father, yeah, I'm trying to lead this ministry, but I got some problems here. I have some dead branches with a bad spirit. Now, I need you to take care of it and watch him. Watch him. Watch him, man. Yes, sir. I'm going to say that again. If the church, if the assembly of Christ allow divisiveness, whether it's individuals or an element within the assembly, to continue in their divisiveness. Brothers and sisters, I don't care what church it is, what assembly, it will become like a malignant disease. It will destroy everything in sight. That's why you have to nip it in the bud. Dead branches, brothers and sisters, symbolize unproductive relationship or habits that hinder your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Unproductive relationship or habits can hinder your spiritual growth. Now, these could be friends who are not supportive of your spiritual journey. They could be activities that distract you from your spiritual practices. That is why you have to do an inventory. Yeah. See, that branches, man. You got to watch them. Yes. They could be, again, friends. It could be activities that do what? That distract you from your spiritual practices. Remember this. Association brings about what? My mother gave me the, the worst butt whipping. I must have been about 10th, 11th grade. My mama didn't care whether you was a Grown man in her house, you steal her child. She'll go upside your head. Bless Leo to your soul. You know, in Evergreen, my little old hometown, it ain't big as a net. You bet your eye, you don't go through it. And in a pool hall, I like to, you know, I see the guys, man, and, you know, in school, they hang around the pool hall, you know. And, man, I want to go in just peek just to you see what's going on in the pool hall. I'm, and I wasn't doing anything. I, I was standing on the corner, and somebody called my mama and said, I saw your boy up on the corner. I came in that house, Leota McCrary got a big old peach limb and thought they were whipping the living you know out of me. She said, boy, birds of feather flock together. I ain't beating you because you did something wrong. You was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong folks. That is why this day I am selective of who I bring into my private world. I don't hang with preachers either. I'm selective. 
Yes, I am. Birds of feather flock together. If you ain't like that, why you keep hanging around that? <laughs> if you are not about division, why you hang around the spirit of divisiveness? Association brings about assimil assimilation. If you desire to maintain a positive outlook and live a spiritual productive life, you need to ask Father Yah to prune the lifeless wood from your life. Yes. Father Yah's pruning. is his beneficent discipline for your spiritual growth. They got their pull, pull it up so they can see it. Father Yah's pruning is his beneficent discipline for your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Now, I'm so glad Father Yah removed all things in the believer's life that will hinder fruit bearing. You see, he ch chastises us to cut away sin and hindrance that would keep us and that would drain our spiritual life just as a farmer prunes his plants, removing the dead branches so that they can bear maximum fruit. You see, this is what is being taught. This is amplified when you go to Hebrews 12. Get a chance to read Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. See, uh, 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 he moved these dead branches from our lives because they are spiritual hindrance. I don't care how fine they look. If they are not contributing your spiritual wellness, let them go. Don't be stuck on stupid. Everything glitter ain't gold. Amen, somebody. That's why you got to be what? Selective. Yes. He removes, he chastises us by cutting away sin and hindrance that drain us spiritually. And because now, I love this, because you are attached to Christ. Listen what he says, verse 3 and 4. Because you attach to me, you are already cleansed. Oh, hallelujah. Because of the word that I have spoken to you. See, the word washes. The word cleanse our lives. Then he adds, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you do what? Abide in me. What is living in a biblical reality? It means being mindful of your abiding relationship with Christ. Now, in the bold statement by Yahusa, um, uh, it does not go unnoticed. This is what he said, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him does what? Bear much fruit. For without me, you can do what? If you're the branch, you need the vine because the life-giving power comes from the vine to the branches. And for that vine to be effective, it must be connected to a power source. Yes, it's connected because Father Yah is the vine root. Yes, abide. What does it mean? It means to remain. Not in and out. 
Not wishy-washy, abide means to remain. The remaining evidence is that salvation has already occurred. That is exactly what John is saying in 1 John 2, 19. Get a chance to read it. I can't amplify that now, but you go on and read it. It's the evidence that you're already saved because what? You're abiding. Yes. You are remaining. Not wishy-washy, not in and out, not in and out, not when you feel like it. No, abide. Remain. Your remaining activity is evident that salvation has already occurred. So the evidence of salvation is what? One's continuance in Christ, in his service, and in his teaching. See, John again speaks to this very issue about abiding relationship with Christ when he says in 1 John, check this out, 2.24. So if you remain faithful to what you have been, now that's the wrong one now, you're on the wrong one, come back now, 1 John 1.24. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning, if you do. You will remain in fellowship with the, with the Son and with the Father. Hallelujah. Let me read again now. Stay with me, y'all. So you must remain what? Faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. Two words again, what? Abide. What's the second word? Remain. All right. So then when we abide and when we remain in Christ, it distinguishes who we are because the abiding believer is the only legitimate believer. Everybody else just pretenders. That's why you're in and out. No consistency in your service, in your worship, because you're not abiding. Yes, and remaining, because only the abiding believer is the only what? Legitimate believers. Everybody else just pretenders. Abiding. And believing address the same issues of genuine salvation. That's the point made in Hebrews 3, 6 through 19. I want you to read, read that passage. I mean, that's some good stuff in there. But let me just lift this last verse here. So we see that because of their unbelief, that, that's what I mean what? Their desire to not to abide, they went and they were not able to enter his rest. Read that again. So we see that because of their unbelief, in other words, their inability to abide and remain, they were not able to enter his rest. I'm going to give you just a summary of that. What that passage is really about is about those who was part of the faith community, but you had other vines with some other gospel, some nonsense, and they began to chase it and became lost and confused. And so what happened? They left the assembly. John said they were never part of us in the first place. If they were, they would what? They would abide. They would what? Remain. They left because they were never part of us. So you see that because of what? Their unbelief. They were not able to enter his rest. Now, get in your head now. Not everybody you see preaching, deacon, singing, doesn't mean that they save. You got a lot of folks out here, man. You know, they can talk the game, but they don't walk the walk. Hallelujah. You got to be careful. Be careful. See, there are other vines, but they ain't connected to the Heavenly Father. 
That's why they're spilling a bunch of nonsense. And because folks have no roots and no substance and no understanding of the word, then they go flocking. Ooh, they preaching over. Oh, they're they doing it over here. And you're all over the place. Lost and confused because you are chasing other vines. I'm going to leave that alone and not Christ the vine. Yes. Now, listen to what he says. Now, he says, now, here's what happened when you don't abide in Christ. He said, verse 6, there you go. He is cast out as a branch and withered. And they gather them and throw them into fire, and they are burned. What is this? This is judgment. This is judgment of unbelievers, those who ain't never been saved in the first place. They're just pretending. That's why they can't abide. That's why they can't remain. That's why they can't take stuff. Because you have no substance. You're not connected to the true vine that gives you the powerful substance that you need for your spiritual wellness. Now, the opposite is true. Those that's not connected, they are with it. Those that are dead, he just threw them out. Dead branches represents what? The unbeliever, the hypocrite. They are thrown into the fire that they may be burned. But brothers and sisters, the opposite awaits the true believer. Let's go to verse 7. If you abide in me, listen to this, and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire. Wow! Because the asking is in his will. And so the Savior says, and it shall be done for you. Hallelujah. If you abide, ask. You're going to ask those things that are pleasing, those things that are in line with his holy will. Yes. And the Savior says, yes. and it shall be done to you. Let me wrap this up now. The true believer obeys and is committed to Father Yah's commands and submit to the authority of his holy word. So in this state, watch this now, your prayers are effective. Why? Because of your commitment which put Father Yah's glory on display as he answered your prayer. You got that? Yeah, yeah. See, you, you, your prayers become effective. Yes, because when Father Yah answered your prayer, it put his glory on the display. Now the Savior said, in verse 8, we wrap this up. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you'll be a, so you'll be what? My disciple. If you're not bearing fruit, man, you ain't no disciple. Disciples bear fruit. Yes, they bear fruit. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciple. Verse 8. That's verse 8. Now, lastly, I want to leave you with this. Your fruitful life distinguishes your discipleship. Brothers and sisters, you don't have to guess. You don't have to guess a person's status in Christ. Do what? Do what? Do what? Because by their fruit, you will know who they what? Oh. Yes, sir. Be fruit inspectors. Yes, that's what we are. 
I can't say who's saved and not saved, but I can sure examine your fruit because your fruit identify who you are and what you're not. Hallelujah. Yes, remember, you glorify God in your fruit bearing. It demonstrates what? Your discipleship and your joy become full through experiencing Christ's own joy in your life. So living in the biblical reality means what? Being mindful of your abiding relationship with Christ. Therefore, every believer under the sound of my voice should be saying to Father Yah today, the vine dresser, work on me. Work on my mind so I can think right. Work on my heart so I can love right. Work on my hand so I can give right. Work on my feet so I can walk right. When he get through working on you, when he get through working on me, we're going to come out like brand new gold. So in the meantime, do what? Be selective who you bring in your private world. Take time to look into your heart and your life and see whatever you need, reading, read some renovation and some change. And then ask Father Yah to work on you. Work on your mind. Work on your heart. Work on your feet. Work on your hand. Because when you get through pruning your life, you're going to come out like brand new gold. Somebody said when they saw him, said, man, how you feel now when you came out the wilderness? Well, I looked at my hand. They look new. I looked at my feet, and they were too. Ever since that day, my soul been satisfied. I don't know about you today. I'm going to make sure that I stay connected to the vine. Because the vine that is Yahshua, he is connected to God. When you're connected to God, you got power. Power to overcome. Power to live right. Power. Yes, Holy Ghost power. Work on me, Father Yah. Work on me. When you get through working on me, I will sure enough be like brand new gold. I am the vine. I'm the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. And every branch, Father, your prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So if he's pruning your life right now, don't get bent out of shape. He is trying to make you more productive. He is trying to bring in you and create spiritual wellness for your life. That is why be selective who you bring into your private world. Be selective what you take in in the form of intellectual growth and spiritual enrichment. Know for a fact what distinguishes you as his disciple is your abiding and remaining. By this, when you bear fruit, Christ said, you are his disciples. So if there's one today who needs some pruning, I invite you today to come because we serve a mighty God. He is able today. He alone has the wisdom to surgically remove from our lives that which is contrary to his way. So if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to be all that Father Yah desire you to be, ask him now to prune your life, to prune the dead branches, prune that dead wood from your life so you can grow spiritually and bear much fruit. Use me, Father Yah. The doors open by Let's Christian Spirits of Baptism. The doors are open. This is your time to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Is 
that one today. If Father, y'all speaking to you and your life needs some pruning, why don't you let him prune your life? seated there's still room there's still room today if he is speaking to you harden not your heart open your heart and your mind today let him come in today family. Let's give Father Yah a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. And we definitely, definitely want to thank Father Yah for our message and our messenger this morning. Hallelujah. And I, I just have to say, say these words that we were going to talk about prayer in children's church this morning. We had a whole lesson planned out about the power and the dynamic and the impact of prayer on our lives, on believers' lives. Yeah. So we have children here, so I, I want to take this time. I, I know that this is kind of out of line, but make this announcement. Next week, children, even if you're late, come downstairs. Children's church is in session, is back on. And we're going to go forth with Hallelujah. There are people who have... There are people who have sacrificed and have been praying so that children's church can open. So let's be uh, uh, mindful of that and let's honor that. Hallelujah. And thank you for that awesome prayer that, that we just experienced. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. All right. I didn't mean to break uh, our prayer.
protocol, but had to. Okay, and our program now is for our a liturgy of the table, our prayer of dedication, set apart by your covenant, and redeemed through Christ's sacrifice, and renewed by the freshing winds of your living spirit. We come bearing our gifts, Sir Moshefu Yah. They are but a portion of our treasure you abundantly give us. With them, we commit our time, energy, and time. faithful servant. Use all that we bring and all that we to bless your holy name. Yahuwah, Amen. The Titus Covenant. The earth belongs to Yah. Everything in all the world is his. Amen. How can I repay Yah for all his goodness to me? For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. And running over. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. But remember this. If you give little, you will get little. On our day of worship, each of us should put aside something from what we've earned during the week and use for this offering. Hallelujah, I turn you over into the hands of the deacons and urchins. Be blessed. like a car running on empty on the Dan Ryan in rush hour. What areas need significant change and growth in your life? Number two, have you asked Father Yard to remove the dead wood of unproductive growth from you surgically? If you haven't, you ought to be saying, Lord, work on me. My mind, my heart, my hand, my feet. Thirdly, what information and materials are you taking in for intellectual and spiritual growth? God forbid if all you do is spend your time on social media with all that garbage and nonsense, all that chatter and foolishness. God forbid. So you got to ask yourself, what am I taking in for my spiritual, intellectual growth? And lastly, who are the people you allow to enter your private world? Friends, activities can rob you of your spiritual growth. Activities can distract you from your spiritual sensitivities or responsibilities and realities. So be selected. And remember, Yahushua is the vine. Father Yah is the vine dresser. Then he goes and be more specific and say, I am the vine and you are the branches and every branch that bears fruit father y'all does what 
prune by removing the distractions and the dead wood from your life. Living in a biblical reality means being mindful of your abiding relationship with Christ. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom.